Six years ago, I was taken from prison and forced to become an assassin for a secret unit of the government. We just felt like Nikita was a great archetypal story, and we fundamentally like stories of female empowerment. A black ops program called Division that has now gone rogue. We have strong women working together to see a character that is so strong and so knows everything that she wants and just doesn't care. That's, that's very empowering. They destroyed my identity and they destroyed the man I loved. The power of the character had picked up a little mini mythology. She is this legendary sort of character that people think that they know. The circumstances are gonna be different than what they were in the film. I escaped and now the man that trained me, someone I trusted, is hunting me. We owed from the very get-go a new era of mythology, a new character to kind of bring that familiar viewpoint that people can relate to that don't know the history of Nikita. What Division doesn't know is that I have a partner on the inside, Alex, a new recruit with a dark past who I've trained in secret to resist their control. I knew that it had been done, and so that was my worry, that like, how are you gonna do it and do it fresh? Together, we're going to take Division apart, one mission at a time. In true, uh, you know, Craig fashion, we are going to be doing something very different and, and, and much more shocking. And the last word they'll breathe before the end will be my name. I saw the American remake in high school before I saw the original French film. I saw the Bridget Fonda version first, and that's how I got exposed to the story. We're both fans of the Luc Besson film, and, and Craig went straight to what happened after that movie, you know, rather than uh, reinvent the whole thing and uh, go back to the beginning again. It was so late in the development season of 2009 it was already targeted for the CW. It was Warner Brothers, who has a stake in the CW network, and the executive there, Tom Sherman, who had uh, developed Alias when he was at ABC. They were looking for their alias. Warner Brothers had the, owned the title Nikita, and so they thought this is a natural fit. There were certain irreducible elements of the Nikita mythos that you had to have to earn the title. From there, you could branch out. The way that um, James Bond or Batman has been, you know, reinterpreted by different people and in different tones even. So when Nikita came around, um, here's an example of uh, a character who had great cinematic roots, a number of iterations, obviously some proven success, so therefore it's commercially viable to start with, but, you know, a character ripe for reinvention and just had that pop uh, potential that you just look for. I had about two weeks to try to come up with a fresh take on it, pretty much right before the meeting I did. I have my initial pad right here, and it's about, uh, I don't know, six, seven pages in, where I'm saying, you know, another way to go is uh, Nikita School, Hogwarts for spies, who's gonna make it through Nikita Academy, Ronin babies. I mean, this is just stuff I write to myself. No one is ever gonna read this stuff. And then I say a, uh, a third way to go is Nikita's on the run, like female fugitive, female born. Michael's after her. Meanwhile, another new recruit's coming in and she's a badass, a new model. So we follow the part of the story we never got to see, which is what happened to Nikita, while starting the cycle all over again with the new recruit. We wanted to offer a little bit of a flip on the mythology by bringing Nikita in with a young protege and fundamentally having her at odds with Division. Target is down. I need extraction at the servant's entrance. Negative. Extraction impossible. What? You always had trouble listening, didn't you? Michael, please, I need to get out of here. You still don't hear me. I told you. There is no out. That's it. Thank you, guys. Cut. Here we go, rehearsing. Ah, action! The casting of the show was, was going to be incredibly important. You're casting people because deep down, what's inside, there's something in them that's like the character. One last time, please. All right, go on again. You know, casting's the hardest thing ever. And, um, but when you get it right, um, everybody's job becomes easier. 
Yeah. We went into the pilot uh, saying that you know Nikita was going to be the most difficult role to cast. The casting director brought up this name, uh, Maggie Q, and uh, it was instant. He said the name, and we looked at each other and said, "Oh yeah, like we should definitely get her." And we were lucky to get her as far as her physical proficiency, her beauty, her command of language, her sensitivity, her ability to deliver uh, an emotional turn and pivot in the middle of a scene, just everything you could ask for. When it came up, it was funny, it came up from an agent and he said to me, um, you, TV series, Nikita. The pilot was fantastic. It was not only smart at the time, Looking back now, being on episode 20 and being done with the whole season in a couple episodes, um, I realize now how great the pilot really was. We went into the pilot uh, saying that you know Nikita was going to be the most difficult role to cast. And so it turned out that Alex was actually turned into the most difficult role to cast and was in fact the last role cast. Really just a few uh, days almost in my memory before shooting. I read it and I was like, this is so challenging. Like Alex is extremely complex and the writing is so good. And I just couldn't wait to like dissect it and take her apart. Lindsay was incredibly intense and she looked different from Maggie, you know, and she came in with a vulnerability and also an anger and a sort of raw quality that was extraordinary. A series will always find out who these people really are. I mean, in the end, you know, episode 20, you're drawing on who you are as a person all the time, you know? Because you're working every day. That, drop it. Yeah. And then it'll be... The audition process was grueling, but it was well worth it. I was just really excited when I got the call. Robert Altman always said, 90% of directing is casting. And I think we got that right with Maggie and with Lindsay. And we've had a very wonderful experience with Craig guiding the show and making the adjustments as we go. A little more of this, a little less of that. Let's, you know, make the adjustment here and there. It's a heightened character, and you've got to believe that they went through what they went through and that they're able to hold a gun and, you know, have this action, have this dark past. That is a lot to ask uh, of any actor. I do believe in the character, in the reality of it, uh, because of her. That's huge. We love super sexy women who are dangerous. It's it's that combination that that you know that's super exciting for somebody. When you actually break it down, men and women, the woman's the better assassin. It's just she has many more tools in her arsenal, you know. She's hot and dangerous. You know, I mean, why else? <laughs> that's why she's awesome. You know, she can seduce you and kill you at the same time. Let's go. There are very few women that can do all that. You can get a really decidedly masculine woman, but then they don't have that softness that makes them accessible to women who don't want to apologize for being soft. Sometimes a woman wants to be beautiful, and there's nothing wrong with that, and that's fantastic. But to add that dimension, that takes a very special individual. It's that dimensionality that's exciting. And I was always attracted to Linda Hamilton's character in Terminator, Sigourney Weaver's character in Alien. Ripley's drive to protect Newt and the alien queen's drive to protect its young. But there are these two women of different species are facing off against each other at the end and all the men are either uh, wounded or, you know, sliced in half. If you took 10 kids, five boys and five girls and you asked them, draw a warrior, most of those kids I think are gonna draw a man. So to put a woman in that role, um, and to have that strength and you've got those two sides of that sort of, you know, um, that intuition, it raises the stakes really to have a female assassin. While I do think that, you know, the physical strength and skill is an important part, I, I really do feel like the strength is internal. And when I think of a strong female character, I think of someone who is confident, knows their weaknesses and their strengths, and is able to use both of those things to their advantage. We have the saying in the writer's room about Nikita walks among us, which, which is very important because it reminds us that Nikita has to be within our world. 
Normally where that comes out is in her emotional interactions with other people. Look, we all wear masks. Everyone, every day, and sometimes we wear them so much we forget who we really are. You have to have that vulnerability, and I think it it's accented by the fact that she is this woman going up against these big, huge, strong guys and kicking their asses over and over again. I think it heightens it even more because it's not what you're expecting. She works on her own. She figures out problems on her own. She hacks her computers, and then she goes out in and amongst the people on these missions. She is a strong, independent, for the most part, solitary character that you know, lives in this lair on the top of a building. It's a great uh, graphic novel image, really. We would joke a lot about the fact that she's Batman, you know, and the fact that she's this cool, you know, she's this dark knight who descends from, you know, descends from above and takes out a bunch of guys and, you know, but then again, who is Batman? And that's when you stop and you think and you say, how can you make Batman real? And she does not have a Bruce Wayne. She does not have an alter ego, so she doesn't have that simple of a sort of a human side. But she does have everything else that an epic character like Batman has, which is a tortured past, you know, a series of incidents in her past that made her what she is, and a sort of devastating and deadly talent that she's not always comfortable with. You have to have some humanity. I think that's why you see her going out of her way to right all of the past wrongs that she took part in. I mean, she's carrying the weight of the entire world on her shoulders, basically, in, in the first season. And you can't not help but feel for that. But she's also trying to put things back together with the man she loves. At its core is a person who has been wronged, and because they were wronged, has been forced to do all these horrible things and is now trying to come back from that. And in doing that, has recruited another person who has her own baggage and her own problems and her own emotions to work through. So they're emotional people in a high-stakes situation, which is what you want in a show like this. Silo, back to right of division, sub-level six off the service hallway. Prey came up with a sort of a great twist on Nikita, having her be not the student of the division, but the one who's left division already and had Alex be the mole within division. It's sort of a karate kid, master, and student dynamic. Alex has a lot to learn. Nikita's been around the block. And together, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. And instead of that being a liability, we always looked at that as an asset. And you're right. In a screenwriting capacity, some people say, yikes, two protagonists, you're bifurcating your primary point of entry. And we never really saw it that way. And we see it as an opportunity. And what is storytelling in the absence of breaking rules? So, as promised, I got you a few things. You want to have an original take on the Alex-Nikita dynamic. And it's a sister-to-sister, mother-daughter dynamic, which I think is fun to explore, because that's a decidedly feminine parent. But at the same time, you have these sort of uber women that are very appealing to men. And that's, that's the idea, is to thread the needle and create characters that women find a point of entry into and men find a way into. And it's interesting to talk about, well, is that cliche or is that just a doggone good idea? Now there's a two-prong approach to everything we do. There's the inside division and the outside division, which sort of doubles the opportunity for stories and has a way for us to get out in and amongst the people and have Nikita be the uh, Batman, if you will, while uh, Alex is sort of the, the double agent inside. And it's great because it's a great opportunity to get the story up on its feet every week and have, uh, and have sort of each character's point of view tell the story their own way. It felt like something you hadn't really seen before. Um, and I think that that character has kind of continued to evolve and you know, maybe along the way, pick up some, you know, different elements. Once I figured out that it was about uh, this two-girl approach between Nikita and Alex, I knew that I could make it work. And that's all I really cared about, you know, so that the way I deal with it is that I sort of keep my head down and, and I write the best outline I can do, then the best script that I can do. Then if it doesn't go, like, well, 
I did the best that I could. If it does go, great. My experience over the years is that you start off with a certain concept about a television series, and then you start doing it, and it begins to tell you what it wants to be. It's kind of zen. You've got to go in assuming that it is going to get screwed up, that someone is going to try to block it, that someone is going to try to take it off tracks. You almost go in with your guard up. Uh, it's going to help, and it certainly helped here. The key to any television series, as far as I've been concerned for all the time I've been doing it, is the writers you have working on it. Bravo, Mark. For me, it's about hiring writers who are self-starters and are kind of all around. You know, it's not like you're the dialogue writer, you're good at action scenes, you know? Some people, I think, do put together a staff like that, but I want everybody to be sort of able to create a story from beginning to end, because that's how you get the best talent. Somebody once said that uh, you have a true mastery of something if you can explain a complex concept in the simplest of terms. And that was the impression I had of Craig uh, going into the room when it comes to story. You'll pitch something in the room, and if it doesn't work, he's able to tell you exactly why. And because he has this encyclopedic knowledge of everything that just blew me away. Was that instead of Amanda letting Michael out, it was going to be Burkoff? Right. Releasing I mean, I think uh, character development, like any other facet of writing, you know, plot development, uh, and all that is all about asking the right questions um, and asking a lot of questions. You said in a writer's room, a good writer's room, that's mostly what you'll hear going on, is people saying, well, what if, and what if? We've said that, that not nobody but Amanda and Michael know. People have said to me, well, how do you know when it's the right question? Because answers start pouring forth. I guess they would have done it there. Burkhoff could say something to the effect of, you know, think, uh, I know the things that go around here. Anybody who writes sits and gets a headache trying to figure out where do we go next, where do we go next? And when you ask the right question, you suddenly know exactly where you want to go and how you're going to get there. And sometimes it happens in an hour, and sometimes it happens in a month. So I have to sort of put it all in there and kind of wade through it and figure out what really, at the end of the day, has meaning, you know? I've written drafts of scripts where, you know, they sort of work 80%, and then something's missing, and I don't know what it is, and it's because I didn't quite commit to a, a character in their journey, you know? I didn't quite commit to, to, uh, to a point of view. Wait. Every writer has his or her own process. Um, in my former life, I was a journalist, so I tend to uh, be very research-based in my approach to story. So uh, before breaking a story, I often need to get immersed in the details of a story and then find plot and character development from there. I have to excavate, I have to explore, and I have to find it when I get there. Now that beat had the whole thing where he was bringing in interrogation equipment, you know, and that's what, we, that's what the room's for, is we can all kind of excavate together, you know, and figure these things out. And, you know, that's why you lean on each other so much, because it's like, I'm stuck, you know? And it's not about writer's block, it's about, I got the seed, I know what it is, I know what they're doing. I know she's got to steal the thing off his, off his drive, but what's it mean at the end of the day, you know? So, I mean, that's, that's what we're constantly asking ourselves. And it, it sounds pretentious, but it's really what you have to do, because if not, it's like, what's the point? But then you could, what if he has a wand, and he's got a wand in for, for hidden or internal or subdermal bugs or something? Because they've already done that. Yeah. I'm of the belief that if you're sitting in the room and everybody's in agreement, you're all in trouble. You're looking for something, something you've hidden. Craig's vision has a lot of twists and turns that you don't, you don't expect them to come when they do, and when they do, you're kind of shocked. Out of backstory, there is a whole lot of real plot and story to be pulled out. I come up with these super detailed and rich backstories, and then I'm thinking, well, how are we, how are we gonna access this stuff? How can we use this? This is, this is really cool, you know? And that's all before we figure out what the plot of the actual episodes is gonna be. You sit there and you think to yourself, okay, she's cool, she's sexy, she's hot, she's killing people, but she's, wait a minute, she's killing people. 
She's killed a lot of people, right? What does that mean? Probably not anything good. I mean, she's probably carrying that around. It probably hurts. So how would that come out in the scene? I know more about division than you'll ever know. They promise you this productive life. You know what you're gonna do? You're gonna kill, and you're gonna kill, and you're gonna kill some more. And one day, if you're very lucky, you're gonna remember what it was like to be a human being. I don't want you to go through what I did, Sarah. All of the writing on the show is very collaborative. We're always sort of, um pitching ideas to the other writers, uh, reading drafts, breaking stories together. So um, we're all very uh, aware of what the tone of the show should be. That's what I mean. That writer's room is filled with seven or eight people who are contributing all the time and contributing really good ideas, which is absolutely mandatory considering how complex the show became. Nikita is our new priority target. I don't know. When we started, if either of us had any idea that it was going to be this complicated. Someone is running her, and I want to know who. This is war. Um, it takes someone special like Craig, who, who I think has had the first to the third season already, already semi-mapped out in his head before um, the pilot even began. The audience is really responding to what we're doing with the Nikita character and the manner in which the show is playing out week to week. So we're very optimistic about seasons two, three, and four. And we've arced out where the stories are going to go. And I certainly hope we get the opportunity to tell those stories, because Craig's up to it, Danny's up to it, and we're up to it. Rolling. That's what I'm here for. Tell me how I can help. You can help me get out of here. Warner Brothers has supported it from the get-go. They've been terrific. The CW's been terrific. Craig had told them going in what this show was going to be. Action! It's her. It's definitely And that's actually the show that's been made. Because I had a strong vision for it, I would say that that's the, the first and, and foremost thing. Now, having said that, I absolutely listened to everybody from the actors to the studio, to the network, to my writing staff, because in a way, that's the audience. They react to it as uh, the audience, you know, would say, oh, if you write something and they go, well, I didn't get this. You know, you're like, what do you mean? No, you're like, why didn't they get it? And that's the fine line, you know, to walk, you know, is that uh, where do you stand the ground where, you're, where you just say, okay, but I get it and I like it.